Background The apostate nation of Israel fell in Acts 7 when they rejected the renewed offer of their king and his kingdom by the Holy Ghost. God gave Israel a one, year, extension of mercy to accept their Messiah because the Son of God had asked the Father to give them a bonus year during his earthly ministry, Luke 13, 6-9. In addition, the first thing Jesus Christ said on the cross was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Luke 23, 34. They knew they were crucifying Jesus the man, but they did not know he really was their Messiah, King, the Son of God. The religious leaders of Israel rejected the renewed offer of the Holy Ghost through the believing remnant, the followers of Jesus three times. The final rejection was the stoning of Stephen one year after the cross. This time they knew they were rejecting the God, man and were without. Excuse. They did not want God to rule over them, PSA. 2, 2. The followers of Christ's earthly ministry, the believing remnant of Israel, did not reject Jesus and continued their ministry until Apostle Paul informed them at the Jerusalem Council, Acts 15 slash Gal. 2, that God had placed them on hold and begun a new ministry to the Gentiles, all people. God had begun forming a new group of saved people called the body of Christ composed of both Jews and Gentiles to live eternal in the heavens, 2 cor. 5, 1. Christ's new heavenly ministry began with the salvation of Saul, Paul, of Tarsus on the road to Damascus in Acts 9. Apostle Paul was the first person into the body of Christ, Rom. 11, 13, 1 Tim. 1. 16. Christ's earthly ministry through Peter, the leader of the twelve apostles, will resume after the body of Christ have been caught up, 1 Thess. 4, 17, to heaven, Rom. 11, 25, 26. Notice that it is not all of Israel, Judaism, but only the followers of Christ, Messianic Judaism that God will continue with at that time. Today, during the dispensation of grace, if anyone, Jew or Gentiles, want to have eternal life they must believe the gospel of Christ. Paul said, I declare unto you the gospel, by which also ye are saved, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, 1 cor. 15, 1 to 4. The five I wills of God were first given to Abraham as an unconditional covenant of promise, Gen. 17, 6 to 8. God was the one doing all the promises. However, God instituted the conditional old covenant at Sinai, when he first proclaimed that Israel were to be a nation of priests based on the if, then. Principle, X. 19, 5, 6. If you obey then I will bless you, if you do not obey then I will curse you, Deuterium. 28. The New Covenant, J. 31, 31-34, is another unconditional covenant promise, like the Abrahamic covenant was, and also includes five I wills of God. Once again it is all about what God is going to do for the believing remnant of Israel. There is no mention in Hebrews of the mystery of the formation of the body of Christ in the dispensation of grace. There is no text on this page. Chapter 1 The Son of God is better than the angels 1, 1 to 3 In the past God spoke through his prophets, but now through his Son 1, 4 to 14 How the Son of God is better than the angels. Verse 5 quotes PSA. 2, 7 and 2 Sam. 7, 14. Verse 6 quotes PSA. 97, 7b. Verse 7 quotes PSA. 104, 4. Verses 8 and 9 quote PSA. 45, 6, 7. Verses 10 to 12 quotes PSA. 102, 25 to 27. Verse 13 quotes PSA. 110. 1. Hebrews is not written to the body of Christ. We, 
the body of Christ, are not the Hebrews. We live in an unprophesied parenthetical time period which began with the salvation of Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus in Acts 9, and will soon end with our rapture. The best way to study Hebrews is as if the dispensation of grace never existed. The last days Peter spoke of continues and connects with the last days of Hebrews. Hebrews through Revelation are written to the Hebrews that will be going through the seven years of tribulation before Christ's return. In the future, God will give the Hebrews enlightenment concerning his letters to them, but there are many rich treasures of wisdom that we can glean from these letters to them. Hebrews is about who the person of Jesus is. He is the Son of God, the Lord, the eternal creator of heaven and earth. He is better than the angels and is seated at the right hand of the Father until he makes his enemies, his footstool. Interestingly, the writer of Hebrews seems to be aware of the dispensation of grace. He wrote to the Hebrews in the world to come, to those who will be saved after the rapture of the body of Christ. It is a series of contrasts between the good things of Judaism, angels, Moses, the Aaronic priesthood, and the Old Covenant, with the better things of the Son of God, Christ's preeminence. Preeminence as the firstborn of the dead, his victory, his apostleship, his priesthood after the order of Melchizedek and the New Covenant. The letter warns the believing Messianic Jewish believers to stay faithful through the tribulation and into the kingdom. Paul also said that Jesus Christ had fulfilled the law. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Rom. 10, 4. He is not the end of the law, the law is eternal. The body of Christ is under Christ's spiritual New Testament, 2 Cor. 3, 6 but not under any covenants, Rom. 9, 4. 8 ways Christ is better or superior to the angels. There is a pattern for how Christ Jesus is better than the angels. It is provided in two sets of 4 to 1, 4, 1x2. There are four reasons that make Jesus the Son better than the angels, and then one about what the angels are. Then four more things the Son is and then again one describing what the angels are. 1. More excellent name, Christ slash Messiah the Son of God, 1, 4. 2. To him pertains the Father, Son relationship, 1, 5. 3. He is equal to and begotten of the Father. 4. The Father told the angels to worship him when he brought his begotten into the world at his birth, 1, 6. In contrast, God made his angels spirits, and ministers a flame of fire. The angels are created servants, not God. 1, 7. 5. The Father called his Son God. His Son has a scepter of righteousness over his kingdom. As King, he rules by what is right. 1, 8. 6. The Father has anointed his Son with the oil of gladness above all others. 1, 9. Acts 10, 38. 7. The Father calls Jesus the Lord that laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of thy hands. In Genesis 1, 1 God said, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. 1, 10. 8. The heavens and the earth shall perish. They will wear out like old clothes, but they shall be changed to new, but God remains the same and unchanged. He is eternal without end. 1, 11, 12. In contrast, the angels are ministering spirits for them who shall be heirs of salvation. The angels serve the Lord by ministering to the believing remnant. Why did Israel need a new covenant? How is his son Jesus Christ better than the angels? There is no text on this page. 1, 1 God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, too hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. The book of Hebrews opens unlike any other book in the Bible, as a letter from God to the Hebrews. In the first four verses the writer establishes who the Son is, the bright express image of the person of the Father, how he purged their sins by himself that the Father has exalts him as heir of all things, and that he, 
the Creator, is now seated in the place of honor at the right hand of His Majesty, the Father. He was made better than the angels and has a better inheritance than they. The city the letter was sent to is not given perhaps because it was to be copied and spread all over. The book is anonymous and not concerned with the human writer. God is the author of the letter and the entire Bible. The writer uses some key verses in the Bible and explains the verses to them in the light of God's new revelation to them concerning God's change in Israel's program since he died and rose. On Calvary, Christ fulfilled the purpose of the law. In time past, God has spoken at sundry, several, different times in the Old Testament and in divers, various, manners, ways, unto their fathers, the twelve tribes of Israel. It is a fact that God first sent his servants the prophets to speak to the Hebrews, but in the last days, he sent his actual son, to speak to them. This reminds us of the parable of the householder, Matt. 21, 33-41 As Jesus spoke this parable while on earth, he informed the Pharisees, Sadducees, and the scribes, that he knew they planned to kill him, the son, just as they had killed his servants the prophets. Jesus ended that parable with a question, When the Lord therefore of the vineyard Israel cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? Matt. 21, 40 The religious leaders answered, They say unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men, and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. Matt. 21, 41 Since they had answered correctly, Jesus warned them not to reject their cornerstone, that the entire kingdom depended on, and that he would give the kingdoms to those that did not reject him. Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures, the stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner, this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes? Jesus quotes PSA. 118, 22, 23 Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you, and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. The believing remnant and whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder, Matt. 21, 42-44 Asterisk notice that God said a nation, singular, not nations plural, a nation is the redeemed remnant of Israel. They are a foolish nation in the eyes of the apostate Israel, Deuterium. 32, 21, Rom. 10, 19. When Jesus returns, he will be the smiting stone in Daniel that will grind up all the unbelieving enemies in Israel. Daniel explained to King Nebuchadnezzar. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it the stone shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Forasmuch as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain a mountain in scripture is a kingdom without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure, Dan. 2, 44, 45 His son's eternal kingdom is prophesied and certain to come. In the past, a prophetic message would break though at various times. God spoke through the prophets by visions, dreams, as well as by direct words, thus saith the Lord. God even spoke from the burning bush, Exodus 3, 4, and through a donkey, number. 22, 28. No prophet received the complete revelation. God was the author of his masterpiece. To mankind, the Bible. God is not giving out any new revelation today, the word of God is complete. He is giving illumination to believers by his spirit to help them understand his completed book. In the past God sent the angel of the Lord and angels to minister to the Hebrews, but in these last days he sent his actual son to them. The one that the prophets pointed to finally arrived. These last days are the last days of Daniel's timeline to the Hebrews when the Son came and will come. 
He came the first time and he will come the second time as prophesied. God the Father spoke directly to them through his Son on earth and from heaven, John 14, 10, 16, 15, 17, 8. The writer says God has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. The us are the Hebrew remnant of believers in Jesus their Messiah, the Israel of God. Christ spoke to Israel during his ministry on earth, not the body of Christ. Messiah came and was rejected. When Christ was on earth, he taught as if there would be no interruption in the fulfillment of prophecy. Therefore, his instructions. Instructions will again apply when prophecy resumes. After the cross, God gave Israel a one-year extension of mercy, a bonus year after the 483 years were over, a renewed offer of the kingdom, another chance to accept their Messiah, King through the ministry of the Holy Ghost as he spoke through Peter's group, Luke 13, 6-9. When Israel blasphemed the Holy Ghost and rejected his offer of their king and kingdom culminating at the stoning of Stephen, Acts 7, 51-53, then the nation of Israel fell, Matt. 12, 31, 32, Rom. 11, 11, 12. The believing remnant did not reject Jesus and the little flock continued their ministry until they were put on hold in Acts 15. Instead of sending his prophesied wrath, the tribulation, God interrupted prophecy and inserted the mystery. After the rapture of the body of Christ that began with Paul's salvation on the road to Damascus, God will resume his dealings with Israel and essentially begin where Christ left off when he put his followers on hold in Acts 15. The last days in Hebrews connect with, and continues, the last days in early Acts. Peter explained the Holy Ghost coming down on Pentecost was that which the prophet Joel prophesied about, Joel 2, 28-32. He said, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Shall prophesy. Before that great and notable day of the Lord come his second coming to judge, ISA. 13, 9, James 5, 9. That whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, Acts 2, 16-21. These are the last days according to Daniel's timeline of 490 years, Dan. 9, 24-27. By the Son, God also made the worlds, the different dispensations. These last days of prophecy will begin after the dispensation of grace ends with the rapture. Our present dispensation is parenthetical what preceded it and what follows it are one and the same program. The last days for Israel according to Daniel's prophetic time clock, will resume, begin again, when Antichrist signs the seven-year covenant with Israel which ends at the second coming. It is the Hebrew people's last chance to be part of the royal priesthood. Peter preached the things which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began, Acts 3, 21. Paul preached Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, Rom. 16, 25. Paul wrote to the body of Christ concerning the mystery that God had kept a secret that he would save another group of people during the dispensation of grace to live in the heavenly places, f. 2, 6, 3, 1 to 9. God kept the formation of the body of Christ a secret from Satan because otherwise he would not have allowed Christ to be crucified, 1 cor. 2, 6-8. We are currently living in the last days of the dispensation of grace, not the last days of prophecy. Romans to Philemon is mystery and the rest of the Bible is prophecy with Acts as a book of transition from prophecy to mystery, from Christ's ministry on earth through Peter to Christ's ministry from heaven through Paul. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, to Tim. 3, 16. Hebrews is speaking of world to come, Hebrew. 2, 5, 6, 5, the dispensation of God that follows the dispensation of grace.
The next events that will begin after the rapture are the tribulation, Christ's second coming, and kingdom on earth. Meanwhile, the body of Christ will be in heaven enjoying themselves with the Lord in what Paul called the ages to come. That in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus, f. 2, 7. After his resurrection, the Father appointed the Son heir of all things which means all things in heaven and earth belong to the Son. The all things also mean that he is the ruler over all thrones, dominions, principalities, and powers, col. 1, 16. Having inherited heaven and earth, Jesus Christ said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth, Matt. 28, 18. He took all power back from Satan by his victory on the cross. Although the Son is the possessor and he won the victory over Satan, he has not taken possession yet. The Son spoke all things into existence. Before he was born in human form, the Son was already the Creator by whom the Father made the worlds, Jesus made and framed the worlds, different times or dispensations in the earth. God's various administrations of different instructions for man to believe and obey on earth during different periods of time. The dispensation of grace was framed by the appearing of Christ to Saul of Tarsus in Acts 9 and then Jesus Christ appearing at the rapture. There was one world to Jews and Gentiles in prophecy, and then world then Jews and Gentiles in mystery. The world to come will be the millennial kingdom under Christ. Christ on earth mentioned that everlasting life is in the world to come. He told Peter, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or parents, or brethren, or wife, or children, for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time, and in the world to come life everlasting, Luke 18, 29, 30. 3 Who being the brightness of his glory they Father's glory, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, for being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. How is his Son Jesus Christ better than the angels? They are created beings and the Son is the victorious Creator God. His Son is a perfect replica of the Father's substance who possessing the same brightness of the Father's glory, and being the express reproduction of the person of the Father and he sustains all creation by the word of his power. The first three verses established that after his Son purged our Hebrew sins, he sat down on the right hand of the Father, his Majesty, P.S.A. 99, 1. The brightness of his glory speaks of his deity for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof, Rev. 21, 23. The Son Jesus Christ possesses the same bright radiant light and glory of God as the Father, John. 17, 5. He is the light of the world, John 8, 12. He is the express or exact image or representation of the substance of the person of the Father, John 10, 30, 14, 9, and he spoke what the Father said. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting, whatsoever I speak therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak, John 12, 50. He upholds, supports, sustains, all things and all governmental positions in heaven and earth by the word of his power, col. 1, 16. For unto us Israel a child is born, unto us Hebrews a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end, upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom, to order it, and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this, ISA. 9, 6, 7. The zeal is like an oath that has sealed the prophecy as certain and can never be reversed, Esther 8, 8. The Son of God purged the Hebrews' sins by himself. No one else was nailed to the cross with him. 
he had all sins placed on him, 1 Peter 2, 24. He shed his own precious blood to redeem them, 1 Peter 1, 18, 19. The Son accomplished that work on Calvary by himself. Israel were the sons of Abraham but they were also the sons of Adam and needed to have their sins purged. After he had by himself purged our sins, he sat down on the right hand of the Majesty on high, the Holy Father, because his work of taking care of man's sins was finished. The first time that Majesty is used in the Bible is by David. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness, and the power, and the glory, and the victory, and the Majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine, thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all, 1 Cron. 29, 11. The kingdom of God is made up of two realms, heaven and earth. God has anointed his son Jesus King over heaven and earth. Purged means cleansed, washed away, expunged, flushed out, removed, eradicated, and eliminated. Christ purged our sins on the cross meaning he totally disposed of them, he got rid of them, by himself, 7, 27. He paid for their sins by himself with his own blood and then put the sins away in his burial and rose victorious. The name of the Son is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It is he that came the first time and was crucified, Rev. 1, 6-8. Jesus Christ suffered at his first coming but the Lord will be triumphant at his second coming in glory to rescue his people, vanquish his enemies, and set up his glorious millennial kingdom. Jesus said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law, or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill, Matt. 5, 17 The old covenant was only temporary, Christ confirmed his new covenant with the shedding of his own blood. Why did Israel need a new covenant? God was married to Israel, a husband unto them, and they broke the covenant that God made with them. Israel had heart trouble, broke his law, and did not love, obey, and keep the Ten Commandments he had spoken to them, and they had agreed to keep. They broke the Mosaic covenant and made the golden calf while Moses was receiving the Ten Commandments, x. 19, 8. 24, 7, 32, 4, 34, 32. God said that his people do not love him and his son and do not want to do the father's business. Oh that there were such an heart in them, that they would fear me, and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them, and with their children forever. Deuterium. 5, 29. They needed a new heart and spirit in their inward parts for their own good. Jesus fulfilled all the prophecies regarding his suffering on Calvary. On the cross, Jesus' mind went over all the prophecies concerning his suffering. Jesus said, I thirst, John 19, 28. They gave him vinegar to drink just as prophesied, Psalm 69, 21. That was the last prophecy Jesus had to fulfill. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head, and gave up the ghost, John 19, 30. He had finished all the prophecies related to his first coming, his suffering, which were also pictured in the first three feasts and then Pentecost was also fulfilled. The feasts pictured in type events of God's plan to redeem Israel. The first three feasts are celebrated in the spring, in the first month, Aviv. Passover, the sacrifice of the Lamb of God at the crucifixion of Christ, unleavened bread, the putting away of sin fulfilled with the burial of Christ, and first fruits, fulfilled at the resurrection of Christ. Jesus Christ is the first fruits of those who will receive glorified eternal bodies, both celestial and terrestrial, 1 Cor. 15, 40. Pentecost being fifty days after the resurrection of Christ was fulfilled in Acts 2. The last three feasts occur in the fall, in the seventh month. Trumpets, gathering of Israel into their land from every nation they were scattered, more of Peter's group X. 23, 16, 34, 22, the Day of Atonement, 
the national forgiveness of Israel at his second coming, and the Feast of Tabernacles, the kingdom with their king ruling being established. The fulfillment of the last three feasts were interrupted by the salvation of Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus in Acts 9. After the rapture of the body of Christ, God will resume his dealings with Israel. Israel will have national forgiveness at Christ's second coming, ISA. 59, 20, 21 Paul also wrote the same to the body of Christ believers in Rome, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in at the rapture. And so all believing Israel shall be saved, as it is written, There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob, for this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins, Rom. 11, 25-27 Christ is in exile in heaven having purged our sins on Calvary. The our sins here is the sins of the believing remnant of Israel, not the our sins, 1 cor. 15, 3, that Paul refers to for the members of the body of Christ. The our sins in Hebrews is the nation's national sins, corporate, that will be forgiven at his return. According to what Moses had told them, if they shall confess their iniquity, and the iniquity of their fathers, with their trespass which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me. And they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember, and I will remember the land. These are the statutes and judgments and laws, which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses, Lef. 26, 40-42, 46, 2 Kron. 6, 37. The believing remnant was separated out of the apostate nation when John the Baptist came to water baptize the kingdom of priests. And were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins, Matt. 3, 6, PSA. 106, 6. John the Baptist told the nation what to do to get out from under the curse, Lef. 26, 40-46 During the tribulation, the remnant will do so again. If we Israel confess our Israel's sins, he God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us Israel from all unrighteousness, 1 John. 1, 9 Peter said that their national sins would be forgiven at Christ's second coming, Acts 3, 19-21. The individual Jew, or Gentile in prophecy that believes in Israel's Messiah and blesses Israel, during the tribulation can be forgiven before then. My little children, these things write I unto you, that yes sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world, 1 John 2, 1, 2. Christ, the Son of God, has been made better than the angels. The Son of God is like the Father, 1, 2, and has obtained a more excellent name than the angels. The Father has made him heir of all things, 1, 2. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the name of Messiah the Son of God. When he came the first time, he was crucified and rose. The Father determined that the Son will inherit the royal kingdom of God. He hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they, one, four, than the angels. Jesus is the heir of all things, one, two, so by inheritance he has a more excellent name than the angels. Jesus is the Son of God, the Creator, not one of the created angels. As the resurrected perfect triumphant valiant victor his Son has preeminence in all heaven and earth. Furthermore, his Son is also the Son of David and has inherited the kingdom, heaven and earth, through the Davidic covenant. Christ said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth, Matt. 28, 18 Christ commissioned his followers in Matthew chapter 10, 
then he commissioned them again after his resurrection during his 40 days on earth in Matthew 28, Mark 16, Luke 14, John 20, and Acts 1 to preach the gospel of the kingdom, Matt. 24, 14. It is one gospel of the kingdom with several commissions. The gospel of the kingdom was part of the gospel of the circumcision which also included Christ's death for the remission of their sins, his burial, and resurrection. Jesus Christ explained it all to them on the very day he rose, Luke 24, 44-48. The commission to teach all nations, Matt. 28, 19. See also ISA 2, 2-4, to 60, 1-3 to Will be in effect during the Millennial Kingdom after the believing remnant of the nation of Israel has become a nation of kings and priests, x. 19, 5, 6, ISA 61, 6, Matt 21, 43, Peter 2, 9, Rev 1 6, 5, 10. Unbelieving Jews the rebels will be purged out from among them during the tribulation and not be allowed to live in the kingdom, Isaac. 20, 38. God will use Antichrist, and Satan, and his twenty, one plagues, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven vials, to get the attention of the believers and to weed out the unbelievers from Israel. In the kingdom, with his spirit in them according to the new covenant, J. 31, 31-34, Isaac. 36, 24-28, the believing Jews will not need to be taught of the Lord, J. 31, 34, Hebrew. 8, 11. 5 For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee? And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. The writer quotes several Old Testament verses to show that the son is better than the angels. Verse 5 quotes PSA 2, 7 and 2 Sam 7, 14 The father said to his son things that he never at any time said to the angels. Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, PSA 2, 7, Acts 13, 33, Hebrew. 1, 5, Rev. 1, 5. Jesus was begotten both by the Father both at his birth and from the dead at his resurrection. Again, neither did he tell one of his angels I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son, quoting 2 Sam. 7, 14 which refers to the son sitting on the throne of King David according to the Davidic Covenant 2 Sam 7, 14-16, 23, 5, Psalm 132, 11, 12, 89, 20-37. The Sure Mercies of David, ISA 55, 33, Acts 13, 34, is that God is sure to keep his covenant to David. He shall cry unto me. Thou art my Father, my God, and the Rock of my salvation. Also I will make him my firstborn God and David's son Jesus, higher than the kings of the earth, PSA. 89, 26, 27. God promised to chastise the children of David if they disobeyed, but he made an oath to David a covenant, that God will keep and that it will not be annulled. An oath is a stamp or sign of the Lord that verifies that God will accomplish what he has said, the promise is irreversible, irrevocable, and can never be reversed. Nevertheless my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips, PSA. 89, 33, 34. In the kingdom on earth Jesus the king will rule the world from Jerusalem and David the king will rule over Israel as his vice-king. PSA 132, 18, J 30, 9, Isaac 34, 23, 37, 25, Hose 3, 5 But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them, J 
30, 9, 6 And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. Verse 6 quotes PSA. 97, 7 Worship him, all ye gods. The Father is not going to tolerate anyone, including the angels to not worship his Son. It is written, I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear, Isa. 45, 23 Isaiah was speaking of men bowing, but Apostle Paul explained. Explained that all God's creatures will bow to his Son. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, Phil. 2, 10, 11. Christ became the legal heir of all that the Father had promised him on the day he was begotten from the dead. Jesus was the first begotten from the dead in a glorified body. Again he never told one of the angels that he would bring them in as the first begotten son into the world. He was born of a virgin and the Holy Ghost begot him, ISA. 7, 14, 9, 6, 7, Luke 1, 19, 26. The angel Gabriel, told Mary that her son, Jesus would inherit the throne of his father David, Luke 1, 31-33 which meant he was the recipient of the Davidic covenant. Mary wondered how that could be if she had not had relations with a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee, therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God, Luke 1, 35. Born of a virgin and fathered by God. Christ did not inherit the sin nature of Adam, Rom. 5, 12. Christ's deity did not begin when he was born. He had always existed. His blood is not tainted with sin, it was the blood of God, Acts 20, 28. The Father only said that to his Son. At his birth, the Father commanded the angels to worship him. And let all the angels of God worship him. The angels worshipped Christ when he was begotten at his birth, Luke 2, 8-14, John 1, 14, 18, 3, 16, Hebrew 5, 5, 11, 17, 1 John 4, 9, 5, 1 Angels are not allowed to receive worship, Rev. 22, 8, 9 when the Father commanded the angels to worship baby Jesus he acknowledged that he was born the God, man, fully God, and fully man. The angels are created beings, but Jesus Christ is creator God. Thou, even thou, art Lord alone, thou hast made heaven, the heaven of heavens an Old Testament term for the third heaven, with all their host angelic creatures, the earth, and all things that are therein, the seas, and all that is therein, and thou preservest them all, and the host of heaven worship peth thee, nay. 9, 6. Christ has obtained a more excellent name than the angels. Only two angels are mentioned by name in scripture, Michael and Gabriel. The archangel Michael has particular reference to Israel, Dan. 10, 13, 21, 12, 1, 2. Gabriel was sent with a message to Daniel, Dan. 8, 16, 9, 21. Gabriel was also sent to tell Mary that she had been chosen to give birth to Jesus Christ, Luke 1, 19, 26. Lucifer was a cherub, not an angel, Isaac. 28, 14. Paul warned against the worship of angels in Col. 2, 18. In the dispensation of grace, the angels are not ministering to us, the believers are teaching them as they observe our lives during an unprophesied time, f. 3, 10. 7 And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. Verse 7 quotes PSA. 
104, 4. The writer now shows what the angels are. Who make his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire quoting PSA. 104, 4. The angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar, Judd. 13, 20, as. The parents-to-be of Samson looked on. The angels are created ministers or servants, not God, PSA. 103, 20. Before his death, Moses blessed the children of Israel and spoke to them. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai. And he came with ten thousands of saints' angels, from his right hand went a fiery law for them, Deuterium. 33, 2. The Creator made His creatures the angels' spirits. But in contrast, God called His Son, God. 8 But unto the Son He saith, Thy throne, O God, is for ever and ever, a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of Thy kingdom. 9 Thou hast loved righteousness, and hated iniquity, therefore God, even Thy God, hath anointed Thee with the oil of gladness above Thy fellows. Verses 8 and 9 quote PSA 45, 6, 7 to indicate what the father said to his son. The father calls the son God twice, once in each of these consecutive verses. The father proudly proclaims that his son is God, the deity of Christ is unmistakable. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever, the scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness, and hatest wickedness, therefore God. Thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows, P.S.A. 45, 6, 7. The Son loved righteousness, he kept the law perfectly. The Son perfectly obeyed the Father's plan of redemption, therefore he the Father exalted above the angels and everyone else. Jesus Christ was anointed with myrrh and aloes after his death, John 19, 39. The wise men from the east found Jesus in a house in Bethlehem and presented the child with gold and frankincense and myrrh, Matt. 2, 11. A king wears a crown of gold, a priest uses frankincense in worship, and after his death, his body was anointed with myrrh, a preservative. The father calls Jesus his son God, whose throne is forever. His kingdom is righteous. The Father has anointed His Son King and He is the Eternal Lord. The Holy Father calls the Son God, the King with a scepter of righteousness to rule over thy kingdom. He will rule in righteousness. The Son was in a human body. The angels are His ministers. It is true that sometimes in prophecy, angels assume a human body. Angels came to Abraham, and helped Lot and his daughters to escape from Sodom but his wife looked back and became a pillar of salt, Gen. 19, 26. The son has the same heart as the father, he loves and hates the same things. Because the son loves righteousness and hates iniquity, evil, therefore, God, even thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows, PSA. 45, 7. The anointing oil is the Holy Ghost, Acts 10, 38. The Son has the same mind and values as the Father, John 10, 30. His Son is exalted above all others. He will be glad. The Lord and His anointed, Psalm 2. Messiah slash Christ means anointed. Seth, Hebrew Sheth, also means anointed. The Son is their anointed promised Redeemer and King, Gen. 3. 15, 2 Sam. 7, 16. 10 And, Thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands, eleven they shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment, twelve and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail verses 10 to 12 quote PSA 102 25 to 27 of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth 
and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure, yet, all of them shall wax old like a garment, as a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. PSA 102, 25-27 The Father called the Son Lord. The Son is the Creator and the Lord. Jesus is the Creator God that laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of his hands. In judgment, he will fold up the old corrupt heaven and earth that perish and grow old like a garment. The unbelievers will perish with the old heaven and earth. Just as a man changes a vesture, a garment such as a robe, Jesus the Creator, will change the old heavens and earth to the new. The Lord is also the judge, John 5, 22. 23. The Father put his Son in charge of the destiny of the heaven and the earth. He is the Lord God, the Jehovah God, Creator, the Most High God, Possessor. Possessor of heaven and earth, Gen. 14, 19. Jesus is the Creator and Possessor of both heaven and earth. Jesus Christ is the Judge of all the earth that judges right, Gen. 18, 25. The Father's words comforted his Son concerning his death on the cross, saying Thou shalt endure. Thy years have no end, PSA. 102, 25-27. His years shall not fail because Jesus is the eternal God. The Holy Spirit sometimes changes the words from the Old to the New Testament to give further revelation. Jesus never earned the wages of sin which is death, eternal separation from God, because he never sinned, Rom. 6, 23, Hebrew. 7, 26, 1 Peter 2, 22. The just suffered for the unjust, 1 Peter 3, 18. Whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it, Acts 2, 24. The old heaven and earth wax old because of the corruption of sin that entered the world through Adam and Eve. God cursed the ground after Satan convinced Adam and Eve to sin and gained dominion of the earth by default. God did not want to leave Satan a perfect creation. But God will restore heaven. And earth and only believers will live in those realms new heaven and new earth. People only have their one life to decide where they are going to spend eternity. Will it be in God's kingdom or in the lake of fire? God gives everyone a chance to believe. Because they reject God, God rejects them and casts them into the giant trash can. The day of God is when the old heaven and earth will burn up and dissolve with fervent heat. 2 Peter 3, 12, 13 Heaven and earth will wax old. ISA 50, 9, 51, 6 Like a garment, clothing Christ will fold them up and they the former heaven and earth will be changed into a new heaven and earth, but Christ remains unchanged and eternal with no end, Matt. 24, 35, Rev. 21, 1. Hebrews warns them to be sure to be part of the new earth with the new heaven. The angels cannot do what Christ is going to do. Christ was always God. His children shall also have eternal life. PSA 102, 28 These verses also will remind them of what Isaiah said, Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look upon the earth beneath, for the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment, and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner, but my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. ISA 51, 6 this judgment will happen after the great white throne judgment, GWTJ, of the lost, men and fallen angels. Paul wrote, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel, Rom. 2, 16. At the GWTJ all people of all dispensations will be judged by whether or not they have God's righteousness imputed to them, or tried to please God by their own works of righteousness vain inferior religious works. 
All the lost will be eternally separated from God and cast into the lake of fire, Matt. 25, 41 Jesus Christ the same yesterday, and today, and forever, Hebrew. 13, 8 The Lord is going to keep his promise to their fathers and will not destroy his nation. For I am the Lord, I change not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed, Mal. 3, 6 Jesus Christ is described as the one who will judge all things. Christ also created the angels so. No wonder that he is better than the angels. These quotations are coming out of Psalms which speak of Christ's reign in the future, PSA. 97, 1, 102, 24 to 27, 13 But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Verse 13 quotes PSA. 110, 1. The Lord, is the Father, said to my Lord, the Son, David's Lord. The Son has been asked by the Father to sit in the seat of honor at his right hand and share his throne until he makes his enemies his footstool, PSA. 110, 1. Christ is on Mount Zion in the third heaven. His enemies are the religious in Israel, those who continue to adhere to Judaism. Those who continue to offer the blood of animals, after Christ offered his blood, the perfect sacrifice. But the believers in Israel, Messianic Judaism, will be heirs of salvation. The reason God is allowing the tribulation saints to suffer is that he must send the prophesied wrath and wait as the rebels in Israel are identified, the tares, and become his footstool. Psalm 110, 1 is the most often quoted psalm in the Bible and it explains Christ's delay in establishing his kingdom. Lord Jesus quoted it when he was on earth in Matthew 22, 44. Peter quotes the same psalm in Acts 2, 34, 35. God never spoke that verse, PSA. 110, 1, to any of the angels. None of the angels were invited to sit at the Father's right hand and to wait patiently. 14 Are they not all ministering spirits, sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? He asks, Are not all the angels ministering spirits that are sent forth to minister unto those who shall be heirs of salvation? The angels are spirit, 1, 7, sent to minister to and serve the messianic remnant of believers who will inherit eternal life in the kingdom, Hebrew. 6, 17, 11, 9, James 2, 5. This is a subtle warning to the Hebrews to make sure they are his heirs and not his enemies when he disposes of the old heaven and earth. There is no text on this page. Chapter 2 The Son did not become an angel, but Abraham's seed too, one to four hearers warned to escape perishing. 2, 5 to 8 God's purpose for man. 2, 9 to 18 The reason Jesus was made a little lower than the angels for a while. Hebrews is written to the Hebrews going through the tribulation, not the body of Christ. Just as Christ gave advanced knowledge to Paul for us, God gave advanced, progressive revelation to the writers of the Hebrew epistles. The Father sent John the Baptist, and Satan made sure he was beheaded. Satan could not resist crucifying the rightful heir of the throne, the Son of God, even though he knew Jesus had said that he would be resurrected, John 2. 19. But it was on that cross that the Lord shed his precious blood to pay for the sins of man and redeem those that believe. Satan was beside himself with glee when Israel's religious leaders rejected the renewed offer of the kingdom through Peter's group and stoned Stephen. Satan thought that God would then have to curse the nation of Israel. The apostate nation fell but not his followers to whom he would give his nation, Matt. 21. 43, Luke 12, 32. Satan was surprised and stunned when God did something that was not prophesied in his word. God saved Saul of Tarsus, he was saved in Acts 9. Then, God put the little flock on hold at the Jerusalem council in Acts 15, Gal. 2, 7-9. Satan had no idea that Christ's death would not only redeem Israel, 
but take back the kingdoms, and save another group who will live eternal in the heavens, 2 cor. 5, 1. Furthermore, God also gave Saul slash Paul that gospel, Gal. 2, 2, that Jesus Christ revealed to him, Gal. 1, 11, 12, justification by faith. After his son's blood payment, the father could justify anyone that believed his son paid for their sins and impute his son's righteousness to them, Rom. 3, 22-26. This is how God solved the sin problem. After our rapture, Christ will continue his ministry on earth though the group he began with Peter and the eleven apostles. The little flock did not reject him, there is still seven years of tribulation to save others into that group. The Son wants to proudly present his holy brethren of Israel to the Father. Incredibly, the author of Hebrews, God, is teaching the believing remnant how to study his word through this letter. In the future, God will use his word to speak to the little flock and bring their attention to their instructions. Is speaking in tongues for us today? What was God's purpose for making man? What is Israel's great salvation? Why did the Son of God take on human flesh? Did Jesus preach the gospel of the kingdom after his resurrection? How is Jesus Christ the Son of God and the Son of Man? How can the gates of hell not prevail against the kingdom church? What does atonement mean? How are the Hebrews saved individually and nationally? To what is Jesus looking forward? How did Satan have the power of death? What is my darling in Psalm 22, 20? Why does God let Satan live? Did God give his creatures free will? What is Satan's origin? How does Satan work today, in the dispensation of grace? How can Jesus Christ help the believing Hebrews during the tribulation? There is no text on this page. David, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer, PSA. 45, 1. This verse makes it clear that the body of Christ is not coming back down. 2. 1. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. The we is the Hebrew heirs of salvation, 1, 14. Since God has spoken to them in the last days by his Son, 1, 2, and not the angels like he did in the past they give more earnest heed to the things they have heard. These Hebrews should be sure not to perish along with the old heaven and old earth. They should not let anything Christ and his followers taught slip at any time but hold fast to it. He spoke to them while he was on earth. After his ascension, he spoke to them from heaven in early Acts. Jesus Christ is speaking to them now from heaven through the book of Hebrews. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. Hebrew. 12, 2-5a. Hebrews was written during the Acts period. They should not be dull of hearing, 5, 11, but hang on every word he has said. The Lord will recompense judgment on his enemies. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word, your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies, ISA. 66, 5, 6. The time is coming that whosoever unbelieving Jews killeth you will think that he doeth God's service, John 16, 2. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears, Luke 4, 18-21. Asterisk notice that Jesus stopped in the middle of the sentence at the comma. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek inherit the earth, he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, 
to proclaim liberty to the captives Israel was captive to Satan, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound liberate his prisoners, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord's salvation opportunity, and the day of vengeance of our God's second coming, to comfort all that mourn they. Believing Renan, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old wastes the kingdom restored, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. And strangers Gentiles shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the alien Gentiles shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But yet Israel shall be named the priests of the Lord, men shall call you the ministers of our God, ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory that they also have eternal life shall ye boast yourselves be proud that you have taught them, Isa. 61, 1-6 why did the Lord stop reading the scroll in the middle of the sentence? Because he was fulfilling the prophecy of first part of Isaiah 61 at his first coming and the second part of that scripture at his second coming. Jerusalem is the tale of two cities. One is the apostate Jews who will believe Antichrist in the tribulation. The other is the true believers over whom Christ will reign. Antichrist will be a political leader, and the false prophet a religious leader, Rev. 13, 11, 12. During the tribulation, God will try to get the Hebrews' attention by sending them twenty, one plagues, the seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven vials. However, they will still not read his word and be saved. Israel's iniquity will be complete at the end of the tribulation, just like the iniquity of the Amorites was, and Jesus. Christ will return in vengeance, Gen. 15, 16, ISA. 35, 4. Vengeance will be on the unbelievers in Israel, the armies of Antichrist, the Gentiles that reject the loving sacrifice of his son or reading and believing his loving guidebook to them, the Bible. 2 For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, Christ's words are more important and steadfast than the angels. If disobedience to what the angels said in the covenant given to Moses was judged, then disobedience to what Christ said would receive greater punishment. Angels were sent from God to his people such as Daniel, Dan. 8, 16, 9, 21, and Mary, Luke 1, 26. Stephen said to the religious leaders that Israel received the law of the old covenant on Mount Sinai by the disposition of angels who have received the law by the disposition of angels, and have not kept it, Acts 7, 53. Apostle Paul also said that angels confirmed the law. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator Moses, Gal. 3, 19. In the past, the mediator was Moses who pleaded with God not to destroy Israel after they sinned and made the golden calf. Every transgression of the law received the just punishment. For example, there was a man that presumed to do as he wished and gathered sticks on the Sabbath day. He broke the clear rule of God not to work on the Sabbath day and was stoned to death. Number 15, 32-36 if the Jews paid attention to the law given through angels, then they should give greater heed to the message the Son gave them for he is greater than the angels. 3. How shall we escape, if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them? That heard him, warning. If the words of angels need to be obeyed, how much more the words of his Son? How shall we escape, eternal judgment? when the Son returns to recompense judgment on his enemies. All unbelievers will be his enemies. We, the Hebrew heirs of salvation, will not escape perishing with the old heaven and earth when he folds them up, Isa. 50, 9, if we neglect the salvation spoken by his Son Jesus Christ and his followers.
Their great salvation was first spoken by the Lord Jesus and then confirmed, verified, unto us by them that heard him, his followers, the believing remnant, Peter's group at and after Pentecost. This statement eliminates one of the twelve from being the writer of Hebrews. For the writer of Hebrews was among them that heard the ministry of the twelve. Also Paul could not have written the letter since he was not saved in Acts 2 when the Holy Ghost came down, but on the road to Damascus in Acts 9. Signs and miracles followed, confirmed, and validated the words spoken by the Lord and they. Twelve apostles that were eyewitnesses to his resurrection, Luke 1, 2. The signs showed that they were speaking for God, Mark 16, 15 to 18. The two witnesses, Elijah and Moses, in Rev. 11, 3, and the 144,000 in Rev. 7, 1 to 10 will preach the gospel of the kingdom and also have the signs following them during the tribulation, in the name of Jesus, Mark, 16, 16, Acts 3, 6. What was the great salvation message that Jesus first began to speak? In the Gospel of the Kingdom, the great salvation is eternal life upon entrance into the Kingdom. If they die as believers they will be resurrected in the Kingdom. The prophecy of their resurrection is all over the Bible, Job 19, 25, 26, ISA. 26, 19, Isaac. 37, 12, Dan. 12, 2, Matt. 8, 11, Acts 23, 6, 1 Cor. 15, 40, Rev. 20, 4 to 6. Hannah also prophesied of their resurrection, 1 Sam. 2, 6. The first resurrection, Rev. 20, 5, is at his second coming. After his testing in the wilderness, and after he heard that John was in prison, Jesus went to Capernaum. From that time Jesus began to preach, and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, Matt. 4, 17. The kingdom in heaven that will come down upon the earth, as the days of heaven upon the earth, Deuterium. 11, 21. That great salvation was to change their minds and believe that Jesus was their king, John 3, 15, 16, 12, 46, so they could have eternal life in the kingdom. The words of the Lord Jesus, recorded in the four Gospels, were confirmed by the twelve and the rest of the little flock in early Acts. They said repent and be baptized and receive the Holy Ghost, Acts 2, 38. The Lord's words will help them escape God's eternal judgment, damned. God gave them his instruction book. It will help them endure the tribulation that God will send on the earth so they can be saved into the kingdom. They will be persecuted for believing in Jesus, but eternal life in the kingdom is what matters. In Acts 2, Peter's group was empowered by the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost to speak the things of Jesus Christ to Yemen of Israel, Acts 2. 22, 3, 12, 5, 35. The Jewish people alive in Matthew through John, and early Acts, were anticipating the last days of the prophetic program in their lifetimes, Acts 2, 16 to 21, 29 to 36, 2 Peter 2, 34. They may have thought that after three and a half years of Christ's earthly ministry, followed by the seven years of tribulation, that the kingdom would arrive. When it didn't they began to doubt and complain. They said, Where is the promise of his coming? 2 Peter 3, 4 There were eighteen years from the cross to Acts 15, when the little flock were put on hold. In a letter, Peter explained that the Lord is long-suffering and does not want any to perish, as Paul also had written. The long-suffering of Christ is not mentioned in Hebrews, but it is in Romans. Although it is not in the canon of Scripture, Paul wrote a letter explaining why Israel's program was interrupted, postponed, and delayed. Peter, the leader of the little flock, publicly endorsed Paul's ministry, 2 Peter 3, 15, 16. 
Paul explained Israel's national blindness in Romans chapters 9 to 11. Israel stumbled at the cross and fell from being the preferred nation in Acts 7 with the stoning of Stephen. I say then, have they stumbled at the cross that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall Acts 7 salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? Rom. 11, 11, 12. This is when the nation of Israel became low, am I as mentioned in Hosea. Then said God, Call his name low, am I, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God, Hose. 1, 9. In Acts 9, God did something un, prophesied. He saved Saul of Tarsus, Paul, on the road to Damascus and called him to be his apostle to the Gentiles, all people of every nation, thus ushering in a new dispensation. The Dispensation of Grace So, it was the Gentiles who were grafted into the good olive tree, the blessing of Abraham, not the body of Christ, Rom. 11, 13, 17 the blessing of Abraham is receiving the imputed righteousness of Christ by faith, also called justification by faith in Christ, Gen. 15, 6, Acts 13, 38, 39, Rom. 4, 3, 5, 23 to 25, Gal. 3, 14. God had kept the dispensation of grace a mystery from Satan and had not recorded anything about it in the Old Testament, 1 Cor. 2, 6-8, F. 3, 1-9. During the dispensation of grace, God would by grace impute the righteousness of his Son to anyone that believed the gospel of grace, 1 Cor. 15, 3, 4, 2 Cor. 5, 21. Any Gentile that believed would become members of the body of Christ, 1 Cor. 12, 13, 27. Christ's group through Paul will live eternal in the heavens, 2 Cor. 5, 1. The Gentile's opportunity for salvation will be cut off, Rom. 11, 22, at the rapture. Following the rapture, God will resume his dealings with Israel. To be saved one must then believe a different gospel, the gospel of the kingdom, Rom. 11, 25-27, Matt. 24, 14. Christ's group of believers through Peter will live in the kingdom on earth for eternity, not in heaven, Matt. 19, 28. As mentioned, Hebrews is a continuation of Christ's earthly ministry. After the outpouring of the Holy Ghost in Acts 2, the next prophesied event was the outpouring of God's wrath. By the time of Acts 7, 55, 56, the Son of Man was standing at the Father's right hand in heaven, and ready to put down the unbelievers. They expected Christ to purge out the rebel from among you, Isaac. 20, 34, and return to set up his kingdom on earth. Once believing Israel becomes a kingdom of priests, x. 19, 5, 6, ISA. 61, 6, 1 Peter 2, 9, Rev. 1, 6, 5, 10, 20, 6, they will preach to the Gentile nations. John the Baptist had also said Israel should repent and be baptized so they could be a nation of priests because the kingdom was at hand meaning it was within reach. X. 19, 5, 6, Matt. 3, 2, 11, 17, 1 Peter 2, 9. Did Jesus preach the gospel of the kingdom to Israel after he resurrected? Yes. It was the resurrected Lord Jesus who spoke about that gospel in Matthew 24, 14. For God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with divers miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. Jesus Christ did signs, wonders, 
and miracles, to demonstrate, like a neon sign, that he was the promised Messiah. God did signs through Peter's group to show they were speaking. For him, Acts 3, 6. Jesus said that those who believe on him would do greater works than his, John 14, 12. In Acts, merely Peter's shadow healed, Acts 5, 15. According to his will, his followers also performed signs and wonders and divers miracles, more neon signs from God. It was God's will to give Peter and the others in the little flock, Luke 12, 32, the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Gifts such as prophecy, healing, and speaking in tongues, other languages they had not studied. The 120 were in the upper room, Acts 1, 15, when the Holy Ghost came down on Pentecost spoke 16 different tongues or languages, Acts 2, 6-11. Speaking in tongues was a sign for the Jews, 1 Cor. 1, 22, that a person had received the Holy Ghost. In Hebrews 6, 4 it says that they, the remnant in early Acts, tasted of the heavenly gift, the Holy Ghost, given in accordance with the new covenant. Early Acts is a continuation of the ministry Christ began in the four Gospels. Hebrews is a continuation of the early Acts ministry as if the dispensation of grace never happened. When Stephen began to tell them about the new covenant which is spoken of in Hebrews, he was accused of wanting to change the customs Moses delivered us, Acts 6, 14. Tongues continued through Acts during the early years of the dispensation of grace to show the Jews throughout the Roman Empire that God had begun working with Paul. But tongues ceased when Paul arrived in Rome and the diminishing of the Jews was complete just as Paul had said they would, Rom. 11, 11, 12, 1 cor. 13, 8 to 10. 5 For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. The Father has not put the world to come in subjection to the angels, but man. This letter is speaking about the world to come the millennial kingdom which follows the tribulation, after the dispensation of grace. The angels will rule in the world to come since they only minister to the heirs of salvation, 1, 14. The believing remnant of Israel, the little flock, are the heirs that will inherit the earthly kingdom. The writer is aware that he is writing to more kingdom believers in the future. Therefore, he must have understood that prophecy was interrupted by the mystery formation of the body of Christ that will live in heaven, f. 3, 1-9. Salvation is promised to the true members of the little flock, Luke 12, 32. 6 But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man, that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man, that thou visitest him? 7 Thou madest him a little lower than the angels, thou crownest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands, 8 Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. The writer quotes Psalm 8, 4-6. In Psalm 8 King David testified, saying, what is mankind that you should care about him? Or the son of man that thou should visit him? Why should God desire to have a relationship with mankind? Why should he care to save us? Mankind was made a little lower than the angels, because mankind is mortal and can die. Lord, what is man, that thou takest knowledge of him, or the son of man, that thou makest account of him? PSA 144, 3. After the resurrection from the dead, man will be immortal, and in that regard equal to the angels. Neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto the angels, Luke 20, 36. However, with the Spirit of Jesus in them, Isaac. 36, 24-28, man will be a little higher than the angels. Originally, God did crown Adam, man, with glory and honor and did set him over the works of God's hands, creation. God's purpose from the beginning was for mankind to have dominion over the earth and reign as king and queen, Gen. 
1, 26, 27, to subdue the earth, and to have all things put under his feet, 2 Sam. 22, 39, 1 Kings 5, 3. The all things are governmental positions of power, col. 1, 16, Phil. 3, 21. When Satan and his angels are cast out of heaven in the middle of the tribulation, God will have bruised Satan. Under your feet Rom. 16, 20 For the body of Christ. God appointed Adam and Eve to rule over his creation. But Adam and Eve sinned, and the power over the earth went to Satan by default. When Satan tempted Christ in the wilderness, the Lord Jesus did not deny that all the kingdom of the world, Matt. 4, 8, were the devils. Satan tricked the woman, but Adam followed Satan knowingly, 1 Tim. 2, 14, 15. God had told Adam that he could freely eat from any of the trees in the garden except one and warned him that in the day he ate of it he would surely die. Satan questioned God's word, Gen. 3, 1. Adam and Eve broke God's one rule and ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They immediately died spiritually and began to die physically. The second death, eternal punishment in the lake of fire was next. But instead of shedding their blood, God shed the blood of animals and clothed them with their coats of skins. Remember fur coats. God killed the animals instead of Adam and Eve. However, Adam and Eve later believed in God and they will live with him and his bride. Little Flock, ISA 54, 4-8, Hose 2, 14-23, In the Future Kingdom on Earth In the Future Kingdom, all governmental things will be in subjection to King Jesus and the Twelve Apostles and the Twelve Tribes of Israelites. 9 But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. But now we, the heirs of salvation, 1, 14, do not at this time see all things in the world put in subjection to man, the Hebrew men have not taken dominion of the earth yet. In the Sermon on the Mount Christ revealed the constitution of the kingdom. The meek, the believing remnant, shall inherit the earth, Matt. 5, 5. But we see Jesus, not Adam, who was made a little lower than the angels. Jesus takes the place of Adam, and the meek believing remnant of Israel take the place of Eve as his bride. Jesus called himself the Son of Man, PSA. 8, 4. The title Son of Man is the right to rule over the earth and man and to judge. Daniel said, I saw in the night visions, and, behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him, Dan. 7, 13. He was not made one of the angels that live forever. He humbled himself and took on human flesh. For him to put on flesh, means that he existed before as God. He was victorious over death, the Father has highly exalted him above all, Phil. 2, 5-11 He had flesh and blood because he was fully man and fully God. Every knee will bow to God's Son. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, Phil. 2, 8, 9a. Jesus Christ, the last Adam in 1 cor. 15, 22, 45, is now crowned with glory and honor after suffering in man's, Adam's, place. He became the God, man, Rom. 5, 15 to 21. He was the Son of Man and the Son of God that dwelt among them. God visited the Hebrews. He became a Hebrew and dwelt among them. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, John 1, 14.
John was one of the three on the Mount of Transfiguration that saw Christ in his glorified state. Jesus took on man's lowly position under the angels for the purpose of suffering death on man's behalf. He is now sitting in the exalted seat of honor next to the Father crowned with glory and honor. The Son is now sitting because his work of redeeming mankind was finished on the cross, John 19, 30. Because a man had sinned, a man had to die. Four thousand years after the original sin, God became a man and died in man's place. For by the grace of God, sending Jesus was by the grace of God, he tasted, experienced, death for every man, he substituted himself in our place. Jesus was made a man so he could taste death for every man. Jesus did not only die to pay for the sins of Adam but the sins of all mankind. By the grace of the Godhead, a plan to save mankind had been made by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, Acts 2, 23. Peter wrote that Christ was ordained to be the precious sacrificial lamb before the foundation of the world. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead, and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God, 1. Peter 1, 18-21. Once Adam and Eve sinned, God's plan of redemption was set in motion. All-wise omniscient God was not surprised when Adam and Eve sinned. His son would provide for the payment of all the world's sin. In his foreknowledge God knew that Satan could not resist crucifying the rightful heir of the throne and that wicked men would join him, Psalm 2. Satan thought he was wise, Isaac. 28, 3. But God demonstrated his far superior wisdom and amazing love. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever Jews and Gentiles in prophecy believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, John 3, 16. This verse is about believing that the name of the promised Messiah is Jesus of Nazareth, John 3, 18, 20, 31, Acts 4, 12. In the four Gospels, Christ died for the many of Israel, but here in Hebrews 2, 9, it is for every man Jews and Gentiles in prophecy, Matt. 20, 28. We see here the influence of what Christ revealed to the twelve after his resurrection in Luke 24, 44 to 48. Jesus purchased salvation for every man and destroyed Satan's plot. Jesus will restore all that Adam lost. Christ saved his people from their sins so Israel could be a nation of priests to save the Gentiles in prophecy. Rev. 5, 5 to 9. The Gentiles' greatest salvation will take place in the kingdom on earth, PSA. 2, 8, ISA. 2, 1 to 3, Zek. 8, 20 to 23. When Christ died, he tasted the second death and what it is like to be a worm in the eternal lake of fire, Psalm 22, 6, Mark 9, 44, 46. 48. Jesus had told Nicodemus, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 3, 14, 15. The serpent represents Christ being made sin for us. 2 Cor. 5, 21. Those who did not look to the serpent perished. Those who refuse to be born again by believing that Jesus is their Messiah slash Christ will never set foot in the kingdom. The kingdom is only for born again believers of the circumcision, circumcised physically and spiritually. God did not save mankind because of anything mankind does, but because he is a loving, faithful, and merciful God. Rom. 5, 8. 10 For it became him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Paul also wrote, All things were created by him, 
and for him, col. 1, 16. The all things refer to governmental positions of power in heaven and on earth. Please keep in mind that, just as Christ gave advanced knowledge to Paul for us, God gave advanced revelation to the writers of the Hebrew epistles. God's revelation was progressive. It was fitting for him, for whom are all things were created and by whom are all things created, in the process of bringing many sons, believers in prophecy, unto glory, eternal life with him in eternal glorified bodies, to make the captain, in the Old Testament the commander-in-chief that led the military in war was often the king, 2 Sam. 5, 2, of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Peter wrote that their sufferings would precede their glory, 1 Peter 4, 13, 5, 1. Christ demonstrated his perfect obedience by dying for the sins of every man, 1, 3. The remnant that believe on him are his sons, the heirs of salvation. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God, John 1, 11 to 13, 1 John 3, 1. Believers in the body of Christ are also sons of God, Rom. 8, 14, and so are believing angels, Job 38, 7. In prophecy, they could be born again individually, but at his return, the believers in Israel will be born again nationally. The Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail, Deuterium. 28, 13. How are the Hebrews saved individually and nationally? The individual Jew, or Gentile in prophecy that believes in Israel's Messiah and blesses Israel, can be forgiven before he returns. My little children, these things write I unto you, that yes sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. 1 John 2, 1, 2. The individual in prophecy is born again by the word of God. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. 1 Peter 1, 23. Asterisk notice in that verse that God's word is incorruptible, Satan cannot change it, and it is living, and it lives forever, God has preserved it perfectly. The sinner that believes his word is born again by God and receive God's imputed righteousness, Paul called it regeneration in Titus 3, 5. The nation of Israel was born the first time when they passed through the watery birth, canal of the Red Sea, x. 14, 19 to 31, 2 Sam. 22, 17. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn, x. 4, 22. According to what Moses had told them, Israel's national salvation and forgiveness depend on the corporate zero ion of their sins. If they the nation shall confess their iniquity, and the iniquity of their fathers, with their trespass which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember, and I will remember the land. These are the statutes and judgments and laws, which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses, Lef. 26, 40-43, 46. Jehovah God spoke to Solomon about Israel confessing their national sins. If my people Israel, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land Israel's, 2 Kron. 7, 14. The believing remnant confessed their sins when John the Baptist came, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins, Matt. 3, 
6. During the tribulation, the remnant will do so again. If we Israel confess our Israel's sins, he God is faithful and just to forgive us Israel our sins, and to cleanse us Israel from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. Peter said, that they should not be surprised by their fiery trial the tribulation, 1 Peter 4, 12, and that their national sins would be forgiven at Christ's second coming, Acts 3, 19-21. The captain of the Lord of hosts gave Joshua orders on how to take down Jericho, Joshua 5, 14, 15. While on earth, Christ was tested and showed that he was and remained perfect, Matt. 4. 1 to 11, Luke 4, 1 to 13. Christ used the sword of the Spirit, quoting the Word of God, to defeat Satan's lies three times, Deuterium. 6, 13, 16, 8, 3. Christ lived a perfect life, he died a perfect death, and because he was sinless, was raised in a perfect glorified body, Phil. 3, 20, 21. The Godhead had agreed that the Son who is the captain of their salvation would be made perfect through sufferings. The Son demonstrated his perfect obedience and love to the Father and his perfect love for humanity. The Son delighted to please the Father. As a man, yet being fully God, Jesus understood that the scriptures were spoke of him in Psalm 22, Isaiah 53, and elsewhere. He understood why he had to go to the cross. Jesus Christ was at peace and willing to go, knowing that there was no other way to save his people, Israel. Through Paul we learn that we in mystery are his people, too. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God, yet, thy law is within my heart, PSA. 40, 8. Like the captain of their salvation, the tribulation saints can delight in doing God's will and be made perfect through sufferings. 11 For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. 12 Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren, in the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. Christ suffered to set them apart, that they may be sanctified, made holy, and all of one with him, for they are his bride. He will not be ashamed of them because they have his spirit in them by faith. 2, 4, 6. 5, 11, 7. Christ called the twelve his friends, John 15, 15, and he prayed and asked his Father to sanctify them. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth, John. 17, 17. His word has that cleansing, transforming, translating power. God divorced apostate Israel, but God did not divorce the believing remnant those that accepted him as their Messiah. There is a union or oneness between Jesus and those that believe in him because they share his spirit. The holiness of Christ has made his followers holy. On the cross, the Son told the Father, I will declare thy name unto my brethren, in the midst of the congregation will I praise thee, PSA. 22, 22 Jesus will declare the Father's name unto his brethren, in the midst of the church, Messianic congregation, I will sing praise unto thee. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. John 17, 26. Spiritual Union Psalm 22 is written in the first person. It was written by King David about 1,000 years before it happened. His prophet David, Acts 2, 30, said, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue, 2 Sam. 23, 2. David also said, My heart is. In eating a good matter, I speak of the things which I have made touching the king, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer, PSA. 45, 1. David was a type of the believing remnant. Through the Holy Ghost, the writer expounds on the meaning of Psalm 22. Psalm 22, 1-24 is an intimate look into the suffering Savior's thoughts while on the cross and his resurrection, followed by his kingdom being established Psalm 22, 
25-31. His enemies mock him for trusting on the Lord to help him, PSA. 22, 8. The soldiers pierced his hands and feet and cast lots for his garments, 22, 16-18. The son said, But be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength, haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog Gentile. Save me from the lion's mouth Satan, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns from the horns of the altar in heaven. Satan was trying to keep the Son of God from resurrecting. PSA 22, 19-21 My darling is my soul, PSA 22, 20, 35, 17 When Jesus Christ died, his spirit went to the Father, PSA 31, 5, Ekl 12, 7, Luke 23 46. His soul went to Abraham's bosom also known as Paradise, Luke 16, 22, 23, 43, and his body lay in the tomb. Once believers are sanctified by him and partake of his glory, he will not be ashamed to call them his brethren. Jesus is looking forward to the day he will proudly declare the Father's name unto my brethren amid the church assembly in the kingdom. The Son will sing praises to the Father among them when he presents them there to his Father. Cry out and shout, Thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee, Isa. 12, 6, 13 And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold I and the children which God hath given me. Jesus Christ had the faith to believe that his flesh would not undergo corruption but that the Father would raise him from the grave. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. For thou wilt not leave my soul David's in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine Holy One the Son to. See Corruption, PSA 16, 1, 10, 118, 17 Christ had perfect trust in what the Father had written in the scriptures and went to the cross trusting that he would be resurrected, and so would the believing remnant. Peter and Paul both quoted Psalm 16, 10, Acts 2, 27, 31, 13, 35. Christ put his trust in the Father, 2 Sam. 22, 2, 3, PSA. 18, 2. The children which God hath given me are the believers in prophecy and include the believing remnant that believed on him in the Old Testament, during his earthly ministry in the four Gospels, and in early Acts. It will also include those that will believe during the Tribulation, John 17, 20. Like their Lord, his future children are also to put their trust in what was written to them. And I will wait upon the Lord his second coming that hideth his face from the house of Jacob in the trib. And I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion, Isa. 8, 17, 18. This verse seems to refers to the Mount Zion in heaven, Hebrew. 12, 22. The son wants to proudly say, Look, Father here I am and the children which you have given me. Although many rejected Christ, those that believe will evangelize and baptize the Gentile nations, Deuterium. 4, 7, ISA. 2, 2-4, Matt. 28, 19. The future little flock are to trust the Lord to bring them through the tribulation, he is their buckler, their shield, 2 Sam. 22, 31. 14 For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, because the children of Israel are flesh and blood, he also likewise took on flesh and blood so that through death on the cross he could destroy, put an end to, Satan who had the power over death. Asterisk notice Satan had the power of death, past tense. Satan does not have that power anymore. How did Satan, 
the devil, have the power of death. Satan introduced sin into creation, Isaac 28, 15 He convinced himself of a lie that a creature can be like God, Isa. 14, 14, 2 Thess 2, 11 Satan, the father of lies, John 8, 44, then convinced Adam and Eve of the same lie. Paul explained the lie. Who changed the truth of God his word into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen, Rom. 1, 25. The lie is worshipping and serving the creature more than the creator. Adam and Eve wanted to be as gods, Gen. 3, 50. When Adam and Eve sinned, their sin separated them from God. Separation from God is spiritual death. As soon as they sinned their light went out and they knew they were naked, Gen. 3, 7. God holds Adam responsible for sin entering the human race, Rom. 5, 12. God then banished them from the Garden of Eden. It was crucial that Adam and Eve not have access to also eat from the Tree of Life. If they did, they would live forever in their fallen state and could not be redeemed. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil, and now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever, therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken, Gen. 3, 22, 23. When we work the ground we can remember that we were taken from it. Christ destroyed Satan and his power over man and death through his death on the cross. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3, 8 Jesus told Apostle John, I am he that liveth, and was dead, and, behold, I am alive forevermore, Amen, and have the keys of hell and of death, Rev. 1, 18 There was an unseen battle on the cross between the Lord Jesus Christ and Satan and Christ one while nailed to the cross. Jesus was the victor, not the victim, he taunted Satan on the cross, Isa. 50, 8, Col. 2, 15 Satan is a defeated foe but his execution date has not yet arrived. When it does, he will suffer conscious, eternal torment. Jesus rose victorious and the gates of hell could not stop him from resurrecting, 107, 16. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock Christ the rock, stone, Dan. 2, 45, 1 Peter 2. 6 to 8 I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matt. 16, 18. The saints of the kingdom church will not be prevented from being resurrected because they will be resurrected just like their king, priest. 1 Peter 1, 5 to 11. The serpent's seed bruised his heel, by crucifying the Lord Jesus, but the seed of the woman bruised Satan's head a lethal blow. Gen. 3. 15, Gal. 3, 16. Christ destroyed Satan and disarmed him, rendering him powerless and inoperative, PSA. 8, 2. Satan's final demise is still future. Why does God allow Satan to live? God is using Satan to identify who his enemies are. Satan already identified one, third of the angels that did not remain loyal to God. Salvation on earth is really a choice of whether a person will believe God or side with Satan. Those who want to do things their way and not believe and obey God's instructions in the Bible are fools. Lucifer had it made but he decided to compete with the Son for the right to sit on the throne and make decisions and execute authority over heaven and earth. Please see the information about Satan, his creation, corruption, and defeat below. 15 and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. While in bondage to Satan, sin, and death, 
without hope of eternal life, men were afraid to die. Christ valiantly came to deliver those who were in bondage to Satan and had fear of death. Fear of death is fear of eternal death, damnation, conscious eternal separation from God with no hope of escape. Christ delivered his mortal helpless, hopeless, brethren that had been captives of the devil and subject to death. Satan had all mankind trapped under sin because no one unholy could come before God. But God's Son became a man, bore man's sins, paid the price, and gave us his righteousness. 1 Peter 2, 24, 2 COR. 5, 21. The law was also bondage, they never knew if they had offered enough sacrifices. Sacrifices to cover their sins. Israel was kept under the law, shut up unto the faith Christ's which should afterwards be revealed, Gal. 3, 23. Job even offered sacrifices after his children had a birthday party just in case one of them had sinned, Job 1, 5. The law constantly told them they were wrong and deserved death, and they could not rest. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law, 1 cor. 15, 56. 16 For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. The Son of God did not become an angel but took on him the mortal flesh of a Hebrew man. The Redeemer's seed, line went from Eve's son Seth to Noah to Shem to Abraham to King David to Jesus, Matt. 1. Christ was made of the seed of Abraham under the Abrahamic covenant, Gen. 12, 1-3, Matt. 1, 1. The promise to the seed, Jesus was that if he died on the cross his seed would have eternal life. The preservation and exactness of the Bible is demonstrated in that not a jot or tittle, Matt. 5, 18, has passed away. One letter S makes a difference. Jesus is the singular seed, not the plural seeds, as explained in Galatians 3, 16. Christ became the kinsman redeemer of the Hebrews, number. 27, 11, Deuterium. 2, 7 to 9, Ruth 4, 4, John 1, 11. Abraham was a Hebrew, Gen. 14, 37, and so were his descendants, Deuterium. 15, 12. Hebrew means to cross over the river, Euphrates. Jesus became a Hebrew to save his people Israel from their sins, Matt. 1, 21. Abraham's seed that was to be a channel of blessing to the nations as a nation of priests, Gen. 12, 1-3, X. 19, 5, 6. The children of Israel are the seed of Abraham, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness, Gen. 15, 16. Paul said that only believing Israel is the Israel of God. Not everyone that is a Jew in the flesh, they are not all Israel, which are of Israel, neither, because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children, the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, Rom. 9, 6b, 8. Since angels never die, Luke 20, 36, they do not get a second chance if they sin. Therefore, God had to make a place for the fallen angels. They will suffer. Eternal punishment in the lake of fire, Matt. 25, 41. 17 Wherefore in all things it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. The people often means the people of Israel. In all things, it was appropriate for Christ to be made like one of his brethren, the mortal Hebrew heirs of salvation, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, and mediate reconciliation between them and Father God. His brethren are Hebrews that believe God's word like Christ did when on earth. Israel's destiny is to become a kingdom of priests, x. 19, 5, 6. Therefore, the Lord became a high priest to Israel so he might be, 
1. Merciful to his people, and 2. Faithful to God the Father. Jesus is the high priest to Israel. A priest is a mediator between the people and God. As their high priest, he is their mediator that made reconciliation. Reconciliation for the sins of the people of Israel. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people Israel and upon thy holy city Jerusalem, to finish the transgression, and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy Messiah, Dan. 9, 24 Jesus began his ministry at thirty years of age as required for priests, Luke 3, 23, number 4, 3. He was washed by water and anointed by the Holy Ghost at his baptism, x. 29, 4-7. As their high priest, he can make peace, atonement or at, 1, meant, between them and God, x. 30, 10. A priest is a mediator between God and man that makes atonement for man's sins. The priest mediates a friendship between God and man. He takes the hand of God in one hand and the hand of the believer in the other and brings the two together so they can shake hands and be friends, removing the animosity. The description of the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, is found in Leviticus chapter 16. Rosh Hashanah is the Feast of Trumpets. God appeared to the high priest in a cloud, that glowed, over the mercy seat. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not, for I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat, Lef. 16, 2. Moses and Aaron were from the tribe of Levi, x. 4, 14. The high priest burned incense to cover the mercy seat with smoke so that he would obscure God when his cloud covered the mercy seat. Then the high priest offered the bull's blood for himself and goat's blood for the people, Lef. 16, 12, Between God and the Broken Law The people waited anxiously outside with bated breath for him to return. When it was accomplished, their sins would be forgiven for another year. The people afflicted their souls or fasted, sorrowed. This ritual illustrates that Christ has gone to heaven to offer his blood on the mercy seat in heaven, entering into the holy places. Into heaven itself, Hebrew. 9, 24, 25. The remnant is now waiting for him to appear a second time unto salvation so they can be forgiven, Hebrew. 9, 28. They are waiting for their sins to be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, Acts 3, 19 at his second coming. Further details about Christ cleansing of the tabernacle in the third heaven will be covered in chapters 9 and 10. 18 For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Their high priest had himself suffered being tempted, therefore he is able to succor, help, those who are tempted, tested, during the tribulation. Christ suffered being tempted in that he did not want to die but obediently laid down his life. He can help them who are executed for their faith. No man take it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father, John 10, 18. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever, whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the Gospels, the same shall save it. For what? Shall it profit a man, if he shall gain the whole world, and lose his own soul? Mark 8, 35, 36. The body of Christ is incredibly blessed not to have to go through Jacob's trouble, J. 37. Christ was tested to see if he would be obedient unto death. He was heroic and triumphed as he passed the final exam of the cross as proved by his resurrection. He lived a perfect life and died a perfect death. Jesus said the twelve will reign with him. 
yet are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel, Luke 22, 28-30. The tribulation saints will be tempted to avoid dying of starvation by taking the mark of the beast, but it is better for them to die and have eternal life. How can Jesus Christ help the believing Hebrews during the tribulation? Christ is their example and God will supernaturally bring their attention to the scriptures they need to obey. For example, God will Instruct them to flee from Judea into the mountain, ISA. 52, 1, 11, 12, Dan. 11, 31, Matt. 24, 15, 16. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Christ asked the Father if it were possible for the cup of his wrath against sin, Job 21, 20, Rev. 14, 10, and having to die on the cross to pass from him. The Father let him know there was no other way to save mankind, therefore Jesus obeyed and went through with the cruel cross. The Son had faith that the Father was would raise him from the dead, PSA. 16, 10, 118, 17. Therefore, Jesus Christ was at peace as he heroically took delight in doing his Father's will, PSA. 40, 8. Christ can empathize with mankind because he has experienced what it is like to be one of them and to want to avoid death. While on earth, Satan tempted Jesus, but Christ did not sin and continued his ministry. Before Satan tempted Jesus in the wilderness, Christ had fasted for forty days and nights, he did not eat any food, Matt. 4, 2, Luke 4, 2. 40 is the number of testing. Jesus Christ triumphed when he was tempted three times by Satan, Matt. 4, 1-11, Luke. 4, 1-13. His faith was tested but his faith was perfect. His temptation was to show that he was the Son of God and could not be tempted. Unlike Eve who was tricked by the serpent, Christ triumphed over Satan. With his spirit in them, he can help others do the same. Three times Satan tempted Jesus with the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, 1 John 2, 16, and three times Jesus Christ responded by quoting scripture. Christ overcame Satan's lies with the truth of scripture, the sword of the spirit, and so must the little flock. As the high priest, Christ is the mediator between God the Father and them to make reconciliation for the sins of his people. The chastisement for Israel's national sins will be complete at the end of the seven years of tribulation. The Father will anoint his holy son as king. The priest used blood to make reconciliation and atonement between God and his people, 2 Kron. 29, 24. Christ willingly suffered death for their sins and did not submit to temptation. Therefore, he can help those who are also being tempted and suffer. They too can look to scripture to encourage them during the prophesied tribulation. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people Israel, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars for ever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, and seal the book, even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased, Dan. 12, 1 to 4. It may be that the book of Revelation is the information that Daniel was told to seal up. Because in Revelation God says, And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand, Rev. 22, 10. God will give the tribulation saints increased enlightenment and knowledge of his word to guide and encourage them. 
They cannot be so afraid of physical death or they will not make it into the kingdom. They must trust Christ and his word. He has taken the sting out of death. Many of the Jews will be persecuted in northern Israel and around the world. But the Jews in Judea will be protected after they flee to a hiding place in the wilderness during the second half of the tribulation, known in the Great Tribulation, as we will learn in chapter 3 and 10. Made sin like the serpent. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Cor. 5, 21.